Y'all know what it is. It is Sipo and Aunt Jessie. Yes, and May in the building, baby. In the building. That's her favorite thing to say. Bail it is in the baby. building. I'm in the building, baby. What you is? What am I? You in the chair. El Humbre. You in the chair. El Humbre. Okay. El Nina. Okay. So, you're a girl. I am a girl. Mujera. Mujera. A woman. You're not a little girl. <laughs> Don't hate on me, baby. All right, y'all. All right. So y'all already know what it is, man. We are back with another video. And we got something that popped up on the list. I want to try. See if y'all like it. I'm going to put this up regardless. We're going to get Aunt Jessie May's opinion on this. It's a day in the life of an Asian in America's most racist town. Wow. Wow, right, right? This is going to be something else. Something else. Something else. Let's Woo! go. Let's see this now. Harrison, Arkansas is the most racist town in the United States. Wow. Well. Oh, shit. Yo, people are looking at us. Yo, people are looking at us in the car. Are you oh, sure? Like weird. Oh, Yo, we stand out so much with this, like, blue hair, blonde hair. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We're probably the only Asians in this town. That would feel so whack to walk, but you know what? No, I take that back. That white, that would be whack to have that kind of vibe in the, in the U.S. You go in and people look at you like you're an alien. Look at yeah, him. Yeah, he's looking at he's looking at Look at all that hate that's Ooh, coming off that energy. Turned. He is turning red. That is some energy. You might be wondering, what the hell are we doing in a place like this? Right. Honestly, we're just curious. There was a video that went viral a year ago claiming Harrison to be the most racist town in America. And as three Asian Americans, we wanted to find out for ourselves. How do they wow. view Asian people here? Are we going to be discriminated against? Oh, oh my god! god. What was, was he doing? Was this supposed to be like some... He was trying to do some Asian martial arts? What? What? That'd be the t worst town ever, this man. Why is, is that town crazy. alive? We get attacked? So today, we're gonna see what life is really like as Asians in America's most racist town. White Did they say white pride radio? Yo, 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 yo. Oh my god, uh, Jesse, man. That guy had a gun on him. I saw the gun. Yeah, yeah, I saw the gun. It was a whole shit. Uh, open carry and concealed carry. Should we get out of here? Like, yeah. like get out as get out of the car. Yo, we gotta uh, buy groceries, man. man. All right, let's go. That's crazy. Now, this is our first stop, Walmart. And let me tell you, this is no ordinary Walmart. Last year, at this exact place, this happened. Exactly what I'm saying is, is exactly what they would ask me to do. Pardon? Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll... uh, I have a hypothesis is that they're asking like, us to wear a mask. There's, there's people that got in with that yeah, one. I'm just saying. Like, and they asked us to wear yeah. specifically? Because the people right after us, they didn't even like budge an eye. See, that guy's not wearing a mask. Very interesting. But, so we walked around for like half an hour, and to be honest, there was quite a bit of staring. But what do you expect when your forehead looks like this? But all jokes aside, it got a little bit uncomfortable at times. China man! My granddaughter is 26 well, years old, China don't, man. They don't see very many of them in person. Or anything besides them. On TV. That is terrible. My granddaughter is 26 She loves China man. What the hell? What is that? Apparently, they don't live Obama. there. Get over here, Bama. I want to hug you. This, I like this one. Pardon? Oh, you want this one? Oh, okay. <laughs> you want this one. So, see, My the whole town is, is not right She yeah. wants to go to China. She wants to bring her China. <laughs> anyway, she loves. How do they know they're not Japanese? China? That's so racist. They don't. They could be know. Korean. But well, she's not racist, honey. What you mean? There, there ain't no racist thing, man. She said her, she said anyway, well, I mean, I don't think that's being racist. She just might be a little tactless. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. 
Uh, I was trying to repeat what she watches the videos on yeah. like, what you call it animated. She loves them. Okay, that was See? probably one of the most uncomfortable experiences ever. Exactly. So for yes, lunch we decided to go to somewhere ugly. where we felt a little more at home. This place called Dragon King. Which happens to be the only Chinese restaurant in town. Fish tank is 100% Chinese. Oh, fish tank, fish tank. Oh, How does that work? To be, you're sewn into a town that just does not like. But they staying in business. Chinese restaurant. Oh, Chinese. 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 Chinese vegetable, mixed Chinese vegetables. Oh, see, see, yeah. Okay, food is here. Does it look authentic? Wow. Is it authentic? Wow. No, this is good. <laughs> this is pretty good. Is it authentic? And delicious. Okay, something isn't adding up here. Space bar, baby. Huh? She said she has been living there and ain't never had no problems. The race, high levels of racism you will see in smaller places than you gonna see bigger cities. Because the racist people don't want to stay in cities. They, they don't outskirts. zoom in. They don't talk to nobody. So that's why they probably ain't paying attention because the people stay into themselves and they probably stay into. Or themselves. people are saying stuff to them, but they don't want to stir up no trouble, so they keep moving. Could be. But child, please, child. you know good and well. Child. How long you been living there now? How, how many friends you got? Child, please. That don't look like you. Yeah. Okay. Just an hour ago, we were literally heckled in a Walmart parking lot and called Chinaman. And now this Chinese lady who's been here her entire life is telling us she's never experienced racism in Harrison. I mean, does this sound really racist to Asians? Or are we just misinterpreting the people? We gotta find out. So after lunch, we decided to continue our journey into the heart of downtown Harrison to see if anything would happen there. Okay, so we didn't experience any racism, but it did seem like nobody wanted to hang with us. Well, that was until we met this guy. I was wondering if there's a basketball court nearby. Are y'all going to play? Yeah, I was wondering if y'all play. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Is this a trick? Is this a trick? Is this a trick? I would be a little worried, too. I don't think I would go anywhere with him. Yeah, I'll be a little worried too. We would have to play in the open field right there by ourselves in front of everybody. Open field. We'd be playing right down across, right down the drive. Exactly. Sidewalk right there. That's a little scary. Toronto, you ever see, you ever see Canadians here? Yeah. I mean, it's wrong way, not Chinese Canadians. <laughs> yeah. Is it random seeing us as like Asian people here? There's a lot of no, Asian people no, here. No, 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 no really? It's just, no, it's not. Yeah, there's, there's, there's all types of people. Been, yeah. all the the internet's, the internet's telling us some weird stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's the internet. Yeah. Get ready for the most epic ball game ever. Uh oh, I'm scared. I'm gonna wear it. Oh, oh back up. Oh, they playing, playing. They playing, playing. Okay, anyways, we headed over to the flea market after ball, and that was when Edward received a call from his mom. Mommy. Hi, yeah. And while Edward was on the phone, a car pulled up next to us. Oh my god, it's like it's about to get ignorant. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's getting a little scary. It's America, speak English. Actually, the exact opposite happened. Do you all speak Chinese? Yeah, we do. Ni hao ma. Oh! I just wanted to say hi. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. No he was like, no way! <laughs> He's like as southern as they get, like, yeah. like ever. So I was yeah. like, you're playing. You're just making stuff up. And he's like, I'm for real. 
I'm yeah. like, all right, then drive around. He's like, okay, then. <laughs> we have a bad rap here. Yeah. yeah. But most of us are like that. Most of you all have been nice here. Yeah, yeah that's nice. good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Anyway. All right. Have a great one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, I'm glad to see me. Because that look, because yeah. when that job popped up and said, speak English, I was like, oh, no, not that. This was good. I'm glad she did that. Yeah. She made me feel better. Right. Yeah, oh, oh. Okay, this was absolutely insane. We spent the whole afternoon here in downtown talking to locals, playing basketball, and we even spoke Chinese out loud in public. Yes! Not only do we experience no discrimination, people here welcomed us with open arms. Well, but we I still had waiting. one final stop. Yo. To be honest, like, I really don't want to go to the bar. You don't want to go to the bar? Oh. Trump, what do you think is going to happen? About two days before we arrived here, we heard on the news that a drunk firefighter assaulted an Asian man threatening to kill him and his people, right here in Arkansas. I spoke English perfectly towards him, and I said, leave me alone, I don't want no trouble. Stalking walk, walking towards me and say, your kind of people is not supposed to be here. I'm gonna- I, So, we gonna pause real quick before we go. He is like, he has like, a, that's amazing. If you listen to his tone, it's like, Asian this Asian tone with really country mix. You hear that? Okay. So he should have been accepted in full. So whoever that dude was just pure ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gonna kill, gonna kill you and kill your kind of people. And despite how kind and welcoming everyone was, maybe we were just lucky. If there was anywhere where we would encounter racism in this town. It would be right here. We were pretty nervous going in. Are you sure you guys want to go in? Right. Huh? And just as we were about to enter, we heard somebody say, What's the best way to learn Mandarin as a Cantonese speaker? I'm kidding. They didn't. We'll get back to the video really short. <laughs> 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 I was wondering. <laughs> now that's funny. That is hilarious. But this is a very important announcement for all Cantonese speakers that I had to make. It's about a program we made called the Canto to Mandarin Blueprint that helps Cantonese speakers become conversationally fluent in Mandarin in just six weeks. Seriously. All these people have done it and now they're new Mandarin speakers. Now if you're wondering why my team and I made this program, I'll be honest with you. Life was very difficult before I learned Mandarin. I lost my dream job to a guy who spoke Mandarin, even though I was more qualified in everything else. I couldn't connect with my ex-girlfriend's parents because I couldn't speak their language. And since everyone was learning Mandarin, I felt insecure that the world was leaving me behind. So I tried learning Mandarin with traditional methods and I failed so many times. Until I was like, why as a Cantonese speaker am I learning using the same methods as people with no Chinese background? It was straight up dumb. That was the start of my journey where I spent a year and a half learning how to leverage my Cantonese advantage to help. I love how they made sure so that you get all the watch time. That's what we call watch time. They put that on the very end with the bar and then they plugged you in because you're so in-depth and want to see what's happening. Let's plug you in, then we're going to play the video. Smart marketing move. Yes, it I is. I was just thinking that. Help me learn Mandarin. It was so hard, and I wasted so much time trying to figure it out, but it was worth it because it completely changed my life. Because now I use my Mandarin in a job I love, I can speak and connect with my own people, and I no longer feel insecure and left behind as the whole world learns Mandarin. And that's why me and a team of professional Chinese tutors have compiled everything that we know into an easily digestible program called the Canto to Mando Blueprint. The Canto to Mando Blueprint uses a repeatable copy and paste method that makes learning Mandarin so efficient and so easy. And with it, you can speak conversationally fluent Mandarin in six weeks and change your life completely. And it's already gotten results for all these other people. Basically, if you speak any Cantonese at all, it doesn't matter what level you are, then this is for you. You call a sick gong gong no wale, then this is for you. You see the link in the description box? Hit that link after the video ends because that's where you find out how you can become conversationally fluent in Mandarin in just six weeks. Leave the nerd. Okay, now back to the bar. The bar was absolutely packed that night. So we ended up getting seated in the corner away from everyone else. And to be honest, we felt like outsiders. Growing up, we were pretty sheltered. So they set them outward, away from everyone? That's what it looked like they say it. From racism. Our friend group was Asian. We went to a majority Asian high school and lived our entire life in this Asian bubble. And because of that, we always found it difficult connecting with other races. And being here in a town like Harrison, where it's 96% Caucasian, we definitely felt like we didn't belong. People here didn't mind us, but we felt they didn't want us here either. 
I mean, sure, everyone was nice to us on the outside, but what do they really think of us? But they play a little Wayne, so apparently he must I, have been yo, real uncomfortable then. He but said, I'm saying, Let's go don't in you five minutes. minutes, right? You hear they playing little Wayne though. Apparently, they ain't playing no no acre breaking. But know. still, yeah. Really? Yeah. You guys came down. You saw us up by Harrison over the last few years. Yeah. If you get on Google and you type in the most racist town in America. Yeah. We pop up, sadly, super sadly, yes, yeah. Wow. Honestly, I've been here, I've been out. It is a extreme hardback cover title of Harrison. That's not always true. The old generations, yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, it's a growing town. I don't see it staying that way for long. My name's Josh. Josh? Yeah. You too, guys. <laughs> well, yay, no, when the doors came down, right? And then he pulled the chair in. I thought he was gonna say something like, "Why are you guys filming?" But he says, "Do you guys have a YouTube channel or something?" Yeah, like, yeah. Yo, I thought we were in trouble. I thought we were in trouble. I am so shocked. I am so. You shocked. won't believe what happened next. That's what I'm talking about. Leave it to the younger generations to break a lot of traditional whackness. Nephews. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Did you poo it over here? Leave it to the young generation. Oh, my God. To break generational whackness. Don't be doing that to Jesse May, baby. Do that to Snapple Reds, but not to Jesse May. And Jesse, Jesse May don't want to smell all of that. And Jesse May, I heard you. I heard. I had to close the door because it was so loud. Child. I thought you were cracking the door open every time. That was so cool. I like how they did that. I like how they did that. The young lady came over. The the, the young man. <laughs> you know, good and well, Jesse May, baby. My poops is so quiet. You can't barely, you can't hear nothing. They sound like. Oh. Uh, Jessica called me in the middle of the night one time. <laughs> See, Bowles, you give us some water. I'm like, oh God, hey. He is such a storyteller, y'all. But anyway, but that was but good. I love it. Younger generations are the ones that's breaking the they cycle. Break, they break the cycle. Yeah. Because they, you know why? The internet. The internet changed a lot of the ignorance because we could start seeing different worlds. Whereas, versus before internet, you couldn't see anything but your world, and that was all that mattered in life. You know what I'm saying? And the things you adapt and understand. You get what I'm saying? Yes, I so do. Now we came here thinking that we get hated on, discriminated against, and even assaulted. Racism, evil, hatred. That's all we heard about this town coming in. This is a town that got trashed, destroyed, and even given up on by the media. Everyone that came from here, even kids, were labeled as racist. And that was so far from our experience here as Asian Americans. Uh, yeah, he got white. And this is something that you have to know that you gotta try stuff on your own. Now, I don't know if I, being a African American woman, would have gone out there to find out. Yeah. But, it's smart that they just did not rely solely on the internet for the information Correct. they wanted to Correct. go and try and see on, this, on their own. And and, that was pretty good. And what being Snapper do, a lot of times people say, don't do this and that, we'll go do it anyway. Because that's their opinion. And I, I don't think it's been yet where we, somebody said, yeah, don't go watch this. And then we were like. No, where was this at? What state Harrison, was this? Arkansas. Arkansas. I can't say I want to go to Arkansas, but good for them. What? Right. And of course, there are some ignorant people out there. Whatever happened in that video is just one side of the story. 
But every story has two sides, and today was a reminder that That's there are so also true. good people out there. Yeah. And the actions of some individuals doesn't <laughs> represent everyone. That was crazy. Did not expect that. But yeah, guys, that was a day in the life of an Asian in America's most racist town. And honestly, mind blown. Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you guys want to see more, we are actually going to stay here for a couple days in this town and make more videos. So subscribe to see the other ones. And until next time, it's And I wow. like what he just said. What's that? That is so true. You cannot. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Don't mess it up. You cannot judge a book by its cover. You can't just think that you're going to see something on the outside and say that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. Because you could look some and look at somebody and think they were the most racist person and don't and don't have a racist bone in their body. Right. And then you might look at the person and think of them as being, oh, they just look like they just blend in and are so culturally diverse. And that, and that is the most racist person. Yep. And, I, and, I've so, had, and I've seen that in real life. So you got to be, be careful about judging folk by what they look like. You can't. And also where they come from. Because this video just showed you that that ain't, that ain't always true. That ain't always Things true. change and people change. Right. I like that. Good for them. Good for them. Yes, yes. So you summed it up. That's pretty much what I was going to say. And absolutely. So, And I like this. I like when people take chances to see if this myth is true or to debunk whatever this myth is. Because not only will that... Um, you step out your comfort zone and you find out what's real and what's not. You shed a light on that town because these these guys have millions, millions of followers. So that sheds a light on that town to say, you know, this ain't all that. So it kind of gives them a, a light versus dark. And now there's some new information about this place that's on the internet that's more current than the last information about them being a racist town. Now you got something new and current to say, well, no, that's this ain't the case no more, baby. This is, we on some new age stuff here, honey. These folk are welcoming everybody. But then you can attest, even though not, you know, you're not these kids' age, you can attest you live in Mexico. And when we come from Georgia, it's like, oh, uh, it's dangerous. It ain't, man, don't nobody, well, man, it's just cool and chill out there. You have to you have to get off of who they are. When they when people say they say who That's, is they, baby? They, they, who is they? The last person that said they is they. They, they, they. The information is not from a valid source and you need to get the facts. Right. Don't just do that he say she say baby because you listening to somebody, auntie, uncle, cousin, friend from way back when who don't have no clue as to what's going on. Ain't never been there and don't know nobody there now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So everywhere people say don't go, it's probably dope. Investigate. Well, well, no, well, 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 I say when people say don't go somewhere and they ain't never been there yourself, you are totally a useless form of conversation to me as far as you got to investigate yeah. on your own and do your homework yourself. That's right. Maybe you just put your pinky toe in the building. That's your pinky toe. What, to, to see how, how the water is? <laughs> to see how it is for yourself. But if it ain't right, then you better get your pinky toe and the rest of your body up out of there quick. Well, that's true. If you feel the water ain't warm, ain't no need to film no more. Gotta go. Big fast and a hurt. What they said was true. <laughs> that's right. All right, man. So that's Seaborn Unjustly Made Man Day in the Life of an Asian in America's Most Racist Town. This was good, y'all. So the lesson and the food for thought is don't judge a book by its cover, and everybody deserves a second chance. That's right. See you on the next one, man. Bye, babies. Bye bye.